In their third year, students of the Biosciences programmes in the School of Natural Sciences and Psychology have the opportunity to take the module Tropical Expedition. For this module, they travel to Costa Rica in the summer before commencement of Year 3, and there they conduct their own research projects in the tropical dry forest and on the coral reef for two weeks. The trip explores the northwest part of Costa Rica from the Pacific coast to the volcanoes. In the first part of the trip, the students have the opportunity to experience the Costa Rican forest around the volcano Rincón de la Vieja including the amazing flora and fauna in the tropical dry and rainforest. The base camp of the Santa Rosa National Park is world famous for its butterfly diversity and for research done on other animals such as ants and monkeys. The students have the chance to meet and learn from researchers and research assistants from different parts of the world, working in the park on projects on butterflies and moths, caterpillars, ants and monkeys. They are introduced to standard sampling methods such as the moth traps shown here. So yes, they... You've got, you've got to pick a no butterfly, I'm sure. <laughs> Sometimes there will be surprises, even around the camp. In this case, very hungry capuchin monkeys. After the introductory trip, students work on their own research projects. These students are working on leafcutter ants, which collect leaves and transport them to their nests, where they use them for cultivating fungi for their own consumption. Amy and I'm studying leafcutter ants and looking at the distance they travel and how long it takes them. Hi, I'm Jess and I'm studying leafcutter ants and the distance travelled and the human impacts. Hi, I'm Denise. I'm studying the ants as well and trying to quantify the flow of biomass that goes through with the ants effect the forest. Hi, my name's Paul. Uh, I'm studying the leaf cutter ants here, um, the waste management and a bit of the human impact. Uh, so there's two sites I'm studying, this one here in the forest, away from human impact and one over there. Um, with the waste management, um, basically I'm looking at the rates that it occurs throughout the day um, and also the distances they remove the uh, different bits of waste. Um, basically trying to see whether there's a difference between the levels in early morning um, and late at night and possibly correlate it with someone else's data to see the changes with different task foraging things. These students are recording butterfly diversity. Hi, I'm Rachel and I'm comparing the abundance of butterflies in the human impact area versus 
the forest area. Uh, my name is Bryce. I'm going to be looking at the diversity as well as the abundance uh, difference between wet and dry forests. Where there are butterflies, there are also caterpillars. Hi, I'm Alex. I'm studying caterpillars. I'm studying the differences in abundance and diversity between wet and dry forests and human impacted and non-human impacted forests. A very common tree species here in the tropical dry forest is the bullhorn acacia. Hi, I'm Kevin Feeney. I'm testing the reaction times of three different species of acacia ants with relation to bird's nest. This acacia is home to ants who viciously defend their home and food source. Hi, my name's Ian. I'm working on the acacia ants. And what I'm trying to find out is, do the ants with less resources, so less fawn to live in and less peltian to feed on, will they defend their tree more vigorously or will they protect it better than ants with more resources? So basically what I'm doing is, I'm counting the, re counting the trees, the fawns, the branches, trying to quantify what I would say was better, worse, and then then to provoke aggression, I grab the tree and see how many ants bite onto my glove. And from that, I should be able to work out what, whether they are defending it better or worse, because I'd say that they're defending it better when they send more ants than less. So that's basically what I'm trying to do. And so far, it's going pretty good. Okay. Hey, I'm Richard. I'm also doing the acacia ants. Only I'm studying the acacia sprouts, as you can see. As well as defending their own tree, the ants will clear out a circle of the surrounding vegetation and leave only the sprouts. And I'm trying to see if there's any relationship between the number of ants and their aggression, so their reaction times to a threat. So for example, irritate them, time their response, and see if that relates to the number of sprouts that are available. And I'm also measuring the distances between the acacia, see if neighbouring acacias have any effect on the number of sprouts as well. Investigating the local howler monkeys is a very popular project for the students. I'm Louise, I'm studying visits to fruit trees, I'm comparing Macluda and Spondia trees to see if there's any difference in the amount of visits, and then if there's any variation in visits when it's cloudy or rainy or sunny, or the location of the actual tree from the forest to the roadside. The second part of the trip involves a move to the coast. The students live here with families in the small fishing village of Kwanikil. Maria Martha introduces them to the village and the people, raising awareness of the problems that overfishing and climate change have caused here. The students can experience wildlife that cannot be found in any zoo, such as humpback whales, here a mother and a juvenile. Or here, mating sea turtles. Locals have founded a small aquaculture farm with the aim of creating an alternative to fishing. During the introductory trips, students also get to know the underwater life at the tropical rocky reef and at their project site, the coral reef.
They then spend three and a half days on their projects collecting data. They work on ecological projects such as assessing coral bleaching, investigating the impacts of sea urchins or algae on the reef, monitoring coral island diversity, or conducting a survey using the International Reef Check Protocol. Behavioural projects are conducted on a number of fish species, including the cleaner fish, the puffer and porcupine fish, the trigger fish and the territorial damselfish. <laughs> Look like they were getting the rock, but then all at one spot it seems to be odd. You know? Hi, my name is Rachel. I am here with John Moore's University of Liverpool on the tropical expedition for 2011. And this year has been absolutely amazing on the tropical expedition. We've seen lots of things. In the forest, we saw spider monkeys, capuchin monkeys, howler monkeys. Um, I chased butterflies for three days. We saw lots of um, iguanas, snakes, um, all sorts of things. Um, it's been really nice to meet the people as well, thanks to Rohair who gave us a talk um, about the dry forest and also to Thomas Hossiet who gave us a really good talk about caterpillar eye spots. Hi, I'm Louise and I'm Janie and we are in Costa Rica on a beautiful beach having an amazing experience learning some research techniques and experimental design. Rainforest has been brilliant, marine brilliant, learnt lots of new fish. And the best thing was it's part of our wildlife conservation degree. Yeah. The attitude towards our conservation is really refreshing. Uh, I've got the same sort of attitude and they've taught us a lot actually. Um, we've had a, a few presentations, learnt about the, the dry forest and the marine protected area. Um, I learnt a lot about how to design an experiment and how much patience is required when you're waiting for little ants to climb a up and down a tree. The overall experience in Costa Rica has been absolutely fantastic, unforgettable. The species that I've noticed throughout my time here is just absolutely amazing. For example, on the marine part, there's humpback whales, there's um, sea, sea turtles. And we also had the moth sheet that they put up at night time to attract moths at night time. So we saw all different sorts of insects and bugs and Simone, I'm sure it's fed up telling me not to touch things. Um, then we came to the marine side and we saw humpback whales um, I saw a white tipped reef shark which swam right past me the other day and um, I saw sea turtles and I've really enjoyed following my pufferfish and porcupine fish around um, and learning all about what they do in the ocean. It's much different actually seeing animals um, in the wild in their natural habitat. It's, um, it's a lot different from being in lectures. You get to go out and see things and put things that you've learned in uni to practice. Being a zoology student you always hear a lot about um, <coughs> conservation issues and um, different things about um, climate change etc and coming out here you've definitely we've definitely had a chance to see it firsthand for example in the forest we've seen areas of forest that have um, been burnt and there's no forest there basically it's all grassland and through my project with the butterflies I saw um, an area of human impact which was all grass and then we saw a area of forest which had been regenerated and it was in a in the process of regenerating and then we saw an area of regenerated forest and it just shows that with the right management techniques um, you really can regenerate areas to bring them back to their full potential and um, the other thing that we did see is that on the marine site we have areas of where the sea temperature has risen and you can actually see the coral bleaching that's going on and eventually that will um, kill the coral. So um, you do actually see firsthand the different effects that climate change can have on different environments. And the people are amazing, the, our family are really kind, great cooks and they're really trying hard with the English and we're sharing the phrase books and everybody in the rainforest from Eladio to Elvin and everybody that's helped out has been absolutely brilliant. Because as you can see it's just stress. Yeah. <laughs> This is your office. <laughs>